Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, an idiot colleague was the reason I quit my job. The second story, my boss refused to give me a one power an hour more while he was making thousands and being a D to customers. I left and he's struggling to replace me. The third story. The manager who kept promising to look into it never did. So I did it. Just left. The first story is... D-Wad co-worker cursed me out over text. So I work in a very small office for a very small local company. How small? Three people in the office, including me. Now I've had this job going on four months. I've worked in this field prior, but this new job has come with some added responsibility I had no experience in. I have to now work with Clerical SH every day, and it's not been an easy learning curve. My mind just doesn't adapt to it. Because of this I've made a handful of mistakes. Nothing egregious, nothing terrible, just embarrassing hiccups. My boss and I are on the same page. As embarrassed as I get when I mess up, I suffer with terrible self-esteem, especially when I feel I let people down. My boss has been kind and patient to a fault. And I always cop to my mistakes, apologize and say I'll do better. I said once I'm surprised you're so patient. He has said that if he felt I needed a stern talking to about my performance, he would give it and that I continue to improve. Also, and not to sound like I'm making excuses, this office is not run like the tightest ship. It's pretty, uh, informal when it comes to learning. It's pretty much a learn as problems arise situation. And since my boss has to always run around out of office, I man the place by myself a lot without having had standard training. In comes the third guy. I'll name him Buggy. Buggy is not my boss. He has no power over me. Buggy is an a-hole. He's not very bright either. He's rude, unprofessional, and crass. He is good at his job, and his job is essentially hounding people for payment. He's our money guy. Because this is a small community, Buggy knows everyone and is incredibly nonchalant with his unprofessionalism. Because that's how he is. He can't work a computer, and asks me to do a lot of his work for him. Stuff he by definition should be doing, but can't because he's computer illiterate. And I honestly don't mind. It's usually an easy thing and it helps me learn. But whenever something goes even slightly wrong, Buggy loses his SH. My boss even said when I started, people have had issues with Buggy before, but you kinda just have to ignore it. He's been insulting to customers and accounting to their faces. He brags about illicit and illegal SH he does. He's all around unpleasant. I knew right then I would end up having to confront Buggy at some point. I play nice with him. I entertain his stories and try to be buddy-buddy, but I knew if I made a mistake that he didn't like, or he reflected poorly on him, he'd flip out. And so he did, today. For the past few weeks, Buggy has wanted me to send an email to somebody every Friday. I keep forgetting, and Buggy has reminded me on the following Monday. I fully take responsibility for my lapse in memory with this. To be clear though, this isn't an urgent email so much as a courtesy thing for this one customer. They technically don't need this email at all, and it could easily wait till Monday every week. Moreover, Buggy can take the 60 seconds to send it as D self, but I send it. So today I get a text, riddled with errors, saying send the blah blah, I won't ask you again. I've swallowed rude and disrespectful coworkers before in past jobs. I was about to swallow this but thought, no, you will not let somebody be rude to you at work. I texted back, I'll make a note to keep on my desk so I won't keep forgetting to send the email but do not talk to me like that again. The following 30 minutes I get texts back saying F you, you work for me, if you don't like it get out. And other insane SH. After the first F you and before the others, I told my boss, Hey, I just had to tell Buggy not to speak to me in a certain way over text, he may call you. Sure enough the phone rings and it's Buggy. My boss laughs it off and tells me to answer it. I tell say, he's calling to chew me out, if I answer I'll just sing to his level, you answer it please. So my boss does. I can hear Buggy ranting like a madman over the phone, and my boss is trying to get him to chill out. He could barely get a word in. Buggy, calm down. No, I won't do that. Bug, just relax. I'm also fuming. I don't care what the situation is. You don't curse out and insult a coworker. It's disgustingly unprofessional. If I messed up, tell me like an adult. I will apologize and fix it. I told my boss after he hung up, you know, I copped in my mistakes. If I mess up, you let me know like a professional and we move on. He won't talk to me like that again. My boss is on my side, thank God. But I'm annoyed Buggy's behavior is tolerated because of his standing with the community and importance to the business. And said we'll all hash it out tomorrow. 
I will be the bigger man when I eventually see Buggy face to face. But God was it hard not stooping to his level and telling him to F off and to kiss my A. If it wasn't for my boss who I'm loyal to, I would have just quit right there. Nobody should have to deal with that SH at the workplace ever. Update. Well, SH, I was hoping it wouldn't come to this. I quit today. I spoke with my boss this morning about how I felt and what needed to be done for a respectful work environment, and he agreed with me, only to let me down. Half the day goes by with no buggy. He finally shows up. Boss gets us together to mediate and make a clean slate. I respectfully start explaining to Buggy my issues with how he spoke to me, and he immediately went off on me, yelling, cursing, the works. I told him to calm down and let me speak. He wouldn't have any of it. My boss just sat there looking forlorn. A customer came in, pausing the drama. After I came back from helping the customer, I said, I wanted this to go smoothly. I wanted to get past this, but he won't allow it. I'm not going to subject myself to this environment if his actions are going to be tolerated. And I just walked out. The boss said earlier that he himself isn't a fan of Buggy, but he knows the owner and he's immersed on the community, so we just have to put up with him. I knew when he said that the chances of me walking were high, but I was hoping Buggy would be reasonable. Who boy was that a naive wish? I'm shocked I kept my cool as well as I did. This man is a real mental midget. The second story is, Boss refused pay rise, bought expensive things, lied he made no money, I left. I work as a landscape gardener in the UK. My boss was a self-proclaimed communist, which makes this all the more ridiculous. Worked for him for two years earning 10 pounds, 12 20 an hour. We would sometimes hire an extra person who was under 25, and he would pay them 8 50, 10 37 an hour. With just him and I, he charged customers 45 pounds, 54 89 an hour, and with three of us, 55 pounds, 67 09 an hour. On top of this, he was paid 1900 pounds, 23 17 a month for a maintenance contract in a housing estate which he only had to tend to once or twice a week. We would work 40 hours in the height of summer, and much less sometimes nothing in the winter, just the way it goes with weather here. But he still got his contract money, which is fair enough. So he was making 1935 pounds, 2360 a week on the good months, March through October, then it would taper off. I wasn't paid for time in the van between jobs. They were all close, so it added up to one or two hours a day. So of the 40 hours a week, I only got 30 to 35 of those. So me and the other guy would get 350, 426 dollars, and 297, 362 dollars respectively a week at most. I put up with this for over two years because he would constantly complain about bills for machines and people not paying him, which turned out to be a load of utter cod swallop. <laughs> I'm really handy with mechanics and would always be fixing and tuning machines and equipment. He got rid of a guy and told me he left of his own will, but I overheard him talking to his friends saying he kept me on because I could fix machines. His van's brake warning light came on and I diagnosed it for him with scan tool, which just a sensor. He bought new brakes all around 700 pounds, $850. He bought a new van for 28,000 pounds, $34,000, and would brag that he would claim tax relief on it and wouldn't have a tax bill that year. He would come in with new clothing, boots, gloves, etc. every week, talking about how much they cost. 120 pound new jacket, 50 pound gloves, etc. This was every week. He said he got his kids swimming lessons for 350 pounds and spent over 1,000 pounds on them each. He has two kids for Christmas and birthdays. His front lawn was covered in kids toys and they were spoiled brats. He got a pizza oven in his garden for 1,000 pounds. Overheard his wife talking about business grants worth 5,000 pounds coming in from the government. Heard him telling his friends about 48,000 pounds profit and new van and machines for free because of tax relief. The list goes on but you get the picture. On top of this, he would constantly badmouth the customers, who were apparently snobs and asked him to do too much. They were all lovely and mostly elderly. Meanwhile, me and the other guy would perform literal backbreaking tasks, shoveling tons of stones, bark, and sand, moving turf, cutting hedges, removing waste. This is the job, but it was hard work. He would be on the phone mostly, if not walking behind a lawnmower and telling us what to do. So, eventually after lots of hesitation and encouragement from family, I worked up the courage to ask for, wait for it, one pound an hour more. Oh, the audacity. He went off. I pay bills for machines. I can't pay you more. You want to work 20 hours and get paid for 40, etc. I stayed calm and said I think my time is worth more and that I work hard. I eventually said I was giving him two weeks notice. He got me to tune all the carburetors on the machine, sent me home and said he has someone else. The other guy and I were good friends and still talk. Apparently, he's still struggling to find someone as useful as me, and nobody wants to work for that amount of money. I now work for myself and make much better money. 
I treat my customers with respect and always go the extra mile. I charge them reasonably and have had lots of work because I do a good job. Best decision I ever made. I fix my own tools and don't spend a lot. My plan is to build a cabin off-grid and become somewhat self-sustainable, helping those local to me for the little money I need to get by, growing my own vegetables and using renewable energy. We'll have to save for a while, but at least I'm not a slave anymore. And the last story is... Written up for following manager's orders twice. Years ago, I worked as a database specialist, which is a fancy title for someone who does simple data entry, for a brand new company whose product was internet-based. When I say brand new, I mean that when I was hired, first employee in my department, after the manager and assistant manager, the company had just moved into their new office from the owner and president's basement. Brand spanking new. My job was simple. Companies from all over the US would fax us their information. That changed daily every day. The fax would show up on the manager's computer. She would distribute the faxes to the assistant manager and me, and keep some for herself. We would enter the information into our database, which could then be searched by any of our subscribers on our website. Fast forward two years. The company, and hence my department, have grown so much that we've had to move to a larger office space. There are now eight other people doing the same job I am, seven of whom I have trained. I have in fact written the training manual. I love my job and I'm an excellent employee, if I do say so myself. Of the 200 or so faxes that we get in every day, I enter over 100 of them, including all the difficult ones. I do this in the same amount of time that it takes my 8 other team members and the 2 managers to do the other 100 or so. But far from minding, I love doing it. Until… Apparently assistant manager got it into his head that he should rightfully be manager, and sets out to accomplish this goal. The way he goes about it is to write programs for the computer, which he somehow thinks will get him promoted into manager's job. Don't ask me how, as manager built the database, has been with the company since it was in the basement, and is personal friends with the owner and president. In order to have time to do this, he starts handing me most of his work. I don't mind, I think it's fun, so I add it to my workload without complaint. Manager sees this as a threat to her position. Again, don't ask me why. So she calls me into her office. For a chat, I am informed that the work assistant manager has been giving me is above my pay grade, and that I'm not allowed to do it anymore. I agree that I will not but explain that it has been given to me by my boss. She says she will handle him. Less than an hour later, assistant manager gives me some of his work to do. I tell him that I've been told by manager that I can't do it anymore. He gets irate and starts yelling at me, in front of the whole department, and telling me I'm your boss and I'm telling you to do it. I again explain that I can't. So he writes me up for insubordination. Naturally, I go to manager and explain what happened. She says she'll take care of it. Next day, repeat. Another good screaming at another write-up. I go to manager again. Same story, she'll take care of it. Somehow I don't believe her. So I go to the owner and president, who I know since it's a small company and he's always very friendly and chatty around the office and keeps telling us at company meetings that he has an open door policy. I explain what's been happening. He gets a deer in the headlights, look, and starts stammering. The gist of the stammering was basically what do you want me to do about it? So I thank him, go straight to accounting. We didn't have an HR department. Grab a blank piece of paper and write I quit. I sign and date it and go home never to return, because F that. Also because I was barely 23. Subscribe, click the like button if you want to support the channel. Thank you for watching.